I'm trying to cut off practically nothing here and sloping it back helps to keep the blade you know in place rather than just slipping off all the time that's another reason for cutting it back This is why I buy Stabila. This is 12 year old, 15 maybe, still level. This one's 30 at least. It's my second one, my first one got nicked after a couple of years. So it's at least 30 year old, still level. My new one, level. This one's, I've had it since I went self-employed so it must be 20 plus years. And a little barker. Uh, exactly the same as that one. Insulation and a frame at the back, plywood, battens, stick the front on and the top. That fits very well. The only difference with this one is chewed up the lining paper. Paint, paint and filler. Right. The decision was, originally I thought anyway, was just to put a little ground on this edge. So I gave it 15mm. Uh, I said in my last video that I didn't know whether that was quite the right depth. But what they've decided is, they might have decided it before, but a sort of smaller version of this, you know, just, just, just break that corner, but still leave this hard edge. So really, it was a bit too far back, so I pulled it forward. I'll either stick some it in there or decorate its cork, one or the other. It only leaves like a little gap at the back, and the back's got 20 mil to play with. I've only pulled it forward about four mil, something like that. So on this one, I've allowed for that. So that should go back there. Your fingers will tell you if you're parallel or not, you know, lock your fingers. That's good. The shelf unit, after they looked at it, we were talking for a couple of hours this morning. After they looked at it, if I can get far enough back, they're quite happy with it being above. And then the pelmet will be, you know, above, above. So, I cut this board at 12.20. So they're happy if I just cut that off at that height. So it'll drop down that 50 mil or whatever you want. So that one will be the same. I'll just cut it off at the same as that. I think I've got to take these to bits to spray them. So I think when I take them to bits, I'll get them on the miter saw, whip them off like that. This one, can't decide. I don't know whether I need to put it in there, but I think I'm going to do anyway. This is the bigger one as well, it's heavier. Mm -hmm. I think I've got to put it in just to just to see, just to make sure it fits. Bollocks. Fucking hell. I've cut both ends off. Yay! Yay for jigsaws! Right. There we go. Lifting it a second time was double hard.
Well, not bad, but I'm not 100% happy with that. Anyway, it's done now. That's what I'm going with. I've sanded everything pretty much. I've trimmed that down a little bit, not a lot. I don't want it too far back, I want it, you know, not to be behind that. This is a piece of the shelf that's going to be sitting on the face of the shelf there, so I'll cut a piece of ply that big because I want this edge to be hard back against the shelf, you know, the shelf front. So if that's like that, I want a piece of ply that big, two pieces. Right, where to start gluing up. I've got 20 mil pins in here. I don't care if they come through on the other side, they're easy to pull out. I think... I'm gonna... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna start at the top, I think. And just put a pin in here and there, just to keep them in place. Then I'm gonna put some clamps on them. I think. I don't want too much glue squeezing out that way, so as I pull it down, I'm going to do that. It'll squish out backwards, and I might not get a lot to the front, but I really don't mind that way up. Could have put the board down first and then mounted these but 
mounting this first one I'd about to staple it from behind and push all these up and I wanted to clamp it and getting this board flat to begin with you know get a nice flat stable surface to start building on I just I just thought it was going to be hard so that's why I did it this way give them a sand get a bit of glue off I'm just going to trim one end just just because I want to There we go. I need 920, 965. Just enough. I've had them down, cut a bit off the bottom. I've left it a little bit longer than it needs to be just so I can clean it up when, on my chop saw. I cut them with, with a rip saw and it's not cutting square you can see. But I'll trim them a little bit when I get them back home. Just put the cornices on just because I don't want to be cutting those when they're painted. I'll put, put the batten at the back there. And I've glued together some ply so I'm going to make some like braces 45 degrees sort of braces on the back and on the side here when it comes to it there's going to be some trim pieces that I'll scribe to the wall and these will get screwed up from underneath probably need a batten along the back here quick update I did them up there I've just put a couple of brackets either side just to hold this front in place so this front is fixed all round put a button on here little off cut of the ply that I'm using I like to cut a piece off the actual stuff that I'm using because it does vary sometimes in size this stuff but that's flush with there I've only put three screws in, but I'm going to put five in eventually. So there'll be a base in there. And then this one's dividing equally into three. So that height minus the thickness of these, which is the, the batten that's going to go on the front of the ply. So that height minus two of them. And that height 790 so all I did was put 790 on that which gives me 735 divide that by 3 was 235 so what I've got is 235 plus the front button 235 plus the front button 245 I think it was don't matter and that worked out like that so what I need to do now is come down the thickness of the top whatever that is I'll level it round put some more buttons on like this then I can get me playing and like I say normally I struggle a little bit I've got to take a button off to be able to get the get the ply in but I think what I'm gonna end up doing is taking all this down because it's coming down anyway take the top off and once the buttons are on I can take the front off and I'll be able to slide the ply in like that and scribe it to get it as close as I can to the shape of this. Mm. I think I'm going to use my laser just as a data mark. I can measure up and down off that. Helps me get it around. And I think rather than using my tape measure, I'm going to use this stick with my marks marked on there and the laser. I've got that marked. So all I have to do now is offer that up to my laser. Cut a bit off the bottom actually. But offer that up to my laser. I'll be able to put my two marks from that. 
Just need to trim it off a little bit to get it in there. Right, so I trim that down a bit. Put a T at the top, just in case I put it down. And you can see in the corner there where the laser don't go around. I can mark that. Well, I have marked it. I've done that all around, marked. I squared all my lines over so that I can, I can put it wherever I want. Remember, I put these studs at one foot. I've already screwed into the bottom there. But because I put them in at one foot and levelled them, plumbed them, all I had to do was measure in a foot, put a plumb line, and because they're two inch thick, I'll be within within a cat. Right. Lots of buttons, lots of screws. And I'm just screwing these buttons on. And I'm at my line, but I realised that actually I've got these ones on the wrong way. Just as well I caught them. I'm inside the cupboard because it's comfy drilling into it. Quite like it now. I've got my hoover hooked up to my drill. And it's to that end. It's hooked up to that that extension there. So when I swap over from the saw, all I've got to do is unhook the over. Don't have to funny around with plugs all the time. That works well. Sucks up the majority of the dust lump. So as soon as I pull the trigger, that comes on. Uh, I managed to get the bottom in. It's a pretty good fit. I cut it slightly oversized and did my scribing thing. Yeah, put it in one way, put it in the other way. But I don't think I'll be able to do these ones because they'll be too big. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. Do the other one, same as this. And come back to this, take the front off to do them ones. Right, I'm going to put these buttons on. I like to put the back ones on first and then they put these ones in. So it's about line of sight. See that one's tight up, but there's a little gap there. But from here, you don't really see that. Same here. I'm just doing this one. What I'm doing is putting the one in either end, putting my level on, just to make sure it's it's not bowed. Then I'll stick these two in, these two screws. Then I'll put these ones on. The laser can go off now actually. And same again, cut it too long, scribe that end, measure across, mark that on the board, put it in the other way, and I'll scribe that one to the measurement. So I just cut a straight line, you can see it's slightly out. Don't matter. That's my measurement. So I'll scribe that in now. Cut that off and it should just drop in. Quite a good gap. I can either pull this board forward, there's a little gap there, decorate its cork. There'll be a stop bead going on here that'll cover that gap. Right, so now I need to do the shelves. I'm going to cut one just to see if I can get it in. But I suspect it'll be easier if I just take it all to bits, take the shelves off, take the tops off, take the fronts off, slide the shelves in. Then I'll be able to scribe them fairly accurately. Normally I have to make them like five mil shorter, which means you've got lots of decorators cork, but Let's see how it goes. Uh, I cut it as accurately as I could using my festival thing to see if I can get it in. But I can't. I could if I took these buttons off, one of these buttons, but I don't want to do that. I'll take them all down. They're coming down anyway. <sighs> Heavy. Right, with the front off I can do my normal thing. Cut them slightly oversized to what they need, but I need to put the front back on. I'll show you that when it comes to it. 
But now I'll scribe them as I normally do with scribe it, measure it, scribe it. And on these ones I'm keeping it hard back to the back because the front is the same distance off there. So that's what I like about these scribers. I can hold that back with one hand and wind that by hand and get it right. I'm just cutting straight lines with track saw, so, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I put an X on the back right corner because you quite easily lose track of which way around it is, taking them in and out. Right, with the front frame temporarily just screwed back on, hard back at the bottom. These pieces are going to be lips on the front of the plier. So what I can do is sit them on there like that. Find a fucking sharp pencil. Sit them on there. Make a mark like that. Top. Middle. I'll do the same to that one. Sit that one like that. Put a pencil mark there. I'll take all this off, cut those, cut those back to that mark, then those lips will sit on the front. I've forgotten my biscuit jointer so I can't put them on today, but I can get everything cut. And like I say, I've forgotten my biscuit jointer so in time, tomorrow probably, I'll glue them on. for tonight. Do these ones. I'll take that one down. Oh, that's it for today. I'll put biscuits on these tomorrow. And take it all back. Take these to bits because they're too big to lift out on my own. Or too heavy should I say.